Hi, this is a quick video about using hit test and point inside and it involved using a subclass view and moving it around the screen. So I'm just starting off with a single view app. I'll call it hit test. Okay, create the new project. And the first thing I'll do is create the subclass view. So I'll create a new file and I'll make a Swift file and I'll just call it subclass view. It's just going to be a rectangle on the screen. So it's going to be a class. Which inherits from UI view. We'll have a required initializer. too much code completion because I haven't imported UI kit. Okay, it looks a bit better. And we'll need another initializer. And both of these should call their respective super. So whichever way you come in, whether you use this programmatically or use a storyboard, we're going to use a storyboard, but whichever way we'd have a configure method. So we'll have a thinking that shouldn't need to be failable. Uh -huh. So we could unwrap it to get around there. Okay, interesting. In this view, we're going to have a reference to the parent view. Okay, that's a basic view for now. So in the storyboard, I'm going to want to drag around my view. So I'm going to set up a stack view with the button in it. So I drag that onto the background and I'm going to pin it to the top, left and right. And of course it won't know the height. So I'll just give it a height, that'll do. And I'll put a button within here reset view and also here I'm going to have a UI view which will be my subclass view I'm not too worried about the size just center horizontally and vertically use width and height and to get these I press control on the keyboard while clicking right and this is not going to be a straight UI view it's going to be a subclass view so, click the assistant, assistant inspector. So then I can have my action, which will be reset 
here. And here I want to have an outlet to my subclass here. Subclass view dot center will be reset when we reset. And in the super view, we're going to set up our view. So I'm going to set a background color so at least it's easy to see. Tags only useful to identify this later, so if we had more than one view, it would be identifiable. So let's see if this at least runs. See if we get any nasty crashes if I didn't set the outlets up properly. Okay, not too eventful. So within the subclass view, I want to experiment with hit test a little bit. So I can override hit test. So then I can print out the point that the user touches. Turn. So let's see what this does. So hit test should always return the furthest descendant of the touch point. So it's always going to return this blue triangle in this case. Blue triangle, blue rectangle. But we can also print out what it's actually doing. So I want to see which view you're returning when I touch. So it's returning view one. And when I click the background, it's not returning any of these views. So arguably it's returning the self dot view, which doesn't have a tag because I didn't set it. When I click the blue triangle, rectangle, it, I get tag one. And as soon as I click off, then I get nil. Now hit test actually calls point inside to be able to do its work and it returns a boolean okay of course unless I print something nothing's going to happen So point would look very similar to there, but we can use super and of course tag's not going to work and we'll see why when we're printing out the result of clicking. True and false. So it just returns true or false if we're clicking on the rectangle. So what I want to do is get this to move around when I drag. So what I'll do is I'll set up the touch gesture. So within configure, I've already set it so the user interaction is enabled. I 
we'll need to assign this. And we also need to create a function to do the dragging. That's why we need the reference to the parent view, if you were wondering from earlier. Now, we need to know where we're dragging from, so that's going to be a variable for last location. And we happen to know that it's going to start in 0, 0. Okay, let's see how this is going to look. Okay, so we're returning true, but we're not moving. Why might that be? Could it be that I've overridden point? Okay, could it be configures not called? Yes. So that means I wasn't assigning the pan gesture recognizer so it wouldn't drag, so it wouldn't move, so it wouldn't call dragging. Okay, zero, zero looks like it might not be the right beginning point. Or I have to set. Ah, so zero, zero is the top left hand corner. So I need to set that when I first touch. And we have a function for that, touches began. And self.center relates to the center of the blue rectangle. So therefore, last location will never be 0, 0. That's just a placeholder. So that looks good, and it resets to the middle. Yeah, not bad. So what I want to do is expand the touch area of this rectangle. So this might be helpful if you have a small user interface element and you want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'll use hit test for that. Though technically you can use point inside to do it, because hit test leverages point inside. So, but hit test feels like the right place to do it. So I'll just make it twenty twenty. So it will be twenty bigger on each axis. if it contains the point we touch. If it does, I'll go return to blue rectangle, if not nil. Using the teenery operator to do it, so it's done in one line, missing return. I disagree, there's a return there. Interesting. So I move the rectangle again, but when I click on just the outside of it, that's moving. So I've made the touch area of this rectangle just that little bit bigger. So, you might want to think of why you might be able to do that to enhance accessibility or to experiment with hit test and point inside.